Japan's environment ministry officials have been working to decontaminate Fukushima Prefecture following the 2011 nuclear accident. They're dealing with a massive amount of radioactive waste and no permanent storage space. They started construction on facilities that could hold the waste for up to 30 years, but they're facing some reservation from residents. Bags containing soil, vegetation and debris contaminated by nuclear fallout continue to pile up. Nearly four years after the nuclear accident, those bags are still at initial storage sites. It's one of the challenges in the reconstruction efforts. Officials say they want to start transferring the waste to plant intermediate storage facilities near the damaged nuclear plant. Workers started building temporary storage grounds on Tuesday. The grounds will be able to hold 20,000 cubic meters of soil and other waste. The start of the construction work is an important step towards the transfer of waste. But officials have yet to secure the needed land for the whole project. They have faced difficulty in negotiations with landowners. Evacuees say they know the storage facilities are necessary to reconstruct the prefecture, but some fear the radioactive waste will be stored there forever. We can't but accept the facilities. Otherwise, we won't be able to move ahead. It's useless to object to the plan. I don't think opposition from a few people will make any difference. I just want to leave the matter to younger people. Officials say it would take several years to transfer all waste stored at initial storage sites and residence yards across the prefecture. Zero point thirty microsievert per hour on the twenty first day of December year twenty fourteen, Nasu Nogahara Park, Nasu Shiobara City, Tochigi Prefecture, Japan.
Japan's love of beer seems to be on the slide. Fewer young people are drinking the beverage and shipments have been falling year by year. Now brewers are trying to tempt consumers back with products that are easy on the stomach and tastier. Seno! Kirin Brewery is among the innovators. Last month it released a new beer-flavored alcoholic drink. Kirin says the product is the world's first zero-sugar, zero-purine low-calorie beverage. Traditional beers contain purine, which is suspected of causing gout. Last year, major beer makers in Japan launched products with almost no purine or sugar. Kirin's product was a hit, doubling its original sales target. So the company has launched another new beer that's cheaper and with even fewer calories. This line can produce 2,000 cans a minute. The Keating factory is operating at full capacity. The firm targets consumers in their 20s to 30s who have started to think about their health. We believe if our product secures a solid footing in the healthier beer category, its reputation with consumers will grow. That will help the entire beer market win back customers. But consumers have more on their minds than just their health when they buy beer. I love beer that goes down smoothly. My favorite is a cocktail-like beer. I prefer beer with a distinctive taste. Asahi Breweries is focusing on niche beers with distinctive aromas and flavors. This year, the firm plans to launch four new beers. Its marketing staff is now fine-tuning the tastes. What flavor should it emphasize? How about an aromatic beer? We want customers to try and get to know different tastes and flavors and help spread the idea that it's fun to drink beer. Brewers are pulling out all the stops to revive the flagging beer market. Time will tell if they succeed. Monkeys are political animals, and like humans, some strive for positions of power. The United States and India have reached a deal to allow U.S. companies to build a new generation of nuclear plants in India without being held legally liable in the event of a nuclear power plant catastrophe. India is one of the few nations that does not exempt nuclear suppliers from accident liability. It puts strict compensation laws on the books after the 1984 catastrophe in Bhopal, when a factory owned by the U.S. multinational Union Carbide Corporation leaked cyanide gas into the air, killing thousands of people. President Obama announced the deal in India during a joint news conference with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In the last few years, trade between our two countries has increased by some 60 percent toward a record $100 billion. We want to trade even more. So we welcome the reforms that the Prime Minister is pursuing to make it easier to do business here in India. Uh, today we achieved a breakthrough understanding on two issues that were holding up our ability to advance our civil nuclear cooperation and we're committed to moving towards full implementation. U.S. firms, including General Electric and Westinghouse Electric, are expected to benefit from the nuclear deal. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Modi discussed plans to expand military ties with the United States, including joint production of drone aircraft and equipment for Lockheed Martin's military transport plane. Today, we also decided to take up our growing defense cooperation to the new level. We have agreed, in principle, to pursue co-development and co-production of specific advanced defense projects. This will help upgrade our domestic defense industry and expand the manufacturing sector in India. Officials at Japan's economy ministry forecast regenerative medicine will become a global market worth more than $450 billion by 2050. And people who work in non-medical industries are finding new ways to break into the business. 
Tokyo Women's Medical University is conducting research in regenerative medicine. A cell sheet is made of a vast number of artificially cultivated cells. The sheet is applied to the affected area of a patient to repair damaged tissues and organs. But the cell sheet is extremely thin, and it's difficult to handle with traditional medical tools like tweezers. When a sheet crumbles and is transplanted in a messy lump, some of the cells die and we'd lose them. The researchers sought help from Furukawa Kiko, a machinery maker with 12 employees. The company makes machines that handle food products precisely and delicately. The machine can move eggs without changing their shape. The company teamed up with Osaka University's engineering department to create a smaller version of the device to manipulate thin cell sheets. The machine makes it easy to work with semi-liquid substances, like ketchup. A plate wrapped around with a sheet rolls things up like a conveyor belt does. The sheet is coated with Teflon, so things don't stick to it. Researchers working in the field of regenerative medicine now use the device more and more. We will continue our research and development and plan to expand into the overseas market as well. Meanwhile, Sony has relied on its own technology to break into the new field for the first time. This is a machine the company has developed to analyze cells. As many as 10,000 cells can be analyzed in a minute. Sony applied its Blu-ray disc technology to create the cell analyzer. By projecting blue semiconductor laser rays onto a disc rotating at high speed, the Blu-ray system can read microscopic pieces of information and replay moving images and voices. In the cell analyzer, this device plays the role of a Blu-ray disc. The device contains pathways that are one thousandth of a millimeter in width. Cells are channeled through these pathways at high speed while laser rays are applied. The analyzer detects the types and numbers of cells in the solution. It can also collect a specific type of cells. In a year and a half since its launch, the analyzer has become the most popular product of its kind in Japan. It has captured the biggest market share of 40 percent. The analyzer is one-third the size of similar products made by U.S. firms, and it's 50 percent cheaper. Sony is marketing the machine worldwide. Taking advantage of our technology in consumer electronics, we have been able to develop a user-friendly product. Even medical students can handle it. The market for regenerative medicine will continue to expand, and an increasing participation of non-medical firms in the business is expected to speed up technological development further. <laughs>